Hi, I'm Roger Dooley. In the last few years, we've all grown used to virtual meetings and Zoom calls. Zoom itself was a lifesaver during the pandemic. It allowed business to move forward even when nobody was in the office. Even post-COVID, virtual meetings are still ubiquitous, with many team members working from home part-time or full-time. But new research from Yale University confirms a serious problem with these virtual interactions. Scientists at Yale wanted to see how our brains engaged with another person in two conditions, face-to-face -face and on a virtual call. What they found wasn't good news. Here's how they ran the experiment. The researchers had two people sit across from each other. In one condition, there was a transparent pane of glass separating them. In the other condition, the clear barrier was replaced by video screens that showed the other person as they would appear on a video call. The scientists used high-end eye-tracking technology, EEG brainwave measurement, and functional near-infrared spectroscopy. FNIRS is a novel technique that has been used often in business or neuromarketing studies. Among other advantages, it allowed the scientists to simultaneously measure and compare the brain activity of the two subjects. Here's what they found. The eye-tracking data showed that people spent more time looking at real faces than virtual faces. Notably, the measures of brain activity showed increased cross-brain synchrony and higher signal strength levels for in-person interaction. In short, in-person interaction affords us richer social context and better processing of facial expressions than virtual. I didn't find these results very surprising. If anything, the lab setup is more favorable to virtual interaction than the real world is. Nobody had their camera off. Nobody was checking email, texting, or playing Candy Crush. There were no distractions from children, pets, or coworkers. In the real world, virtual interactions are going to be even less engaging. And as long as we're being critical of virtual interactions, there's more. One survey of 2,000 office workers found what they disliked most about virtual meetings was, wait for it, being on camera. According to Zoom's latest data, 42% of call participants don't have their camera on. And while having cameras on allows at least some nonverbal communication from facial expressions and body language, staring into a camera for hours can be exhausting. Stanford researchers found this fatigue was caused by, in their words, excessive amounts of close-up eye gaze, cognitive load, increased self-evaluation from staring at video of oneself, and constraints on physical mobility. What does this mean for Zoom calls, virtual meetings, and working from home? Well, I expect that some of the CEOs pushing people back to the office full-time will use this new data to support that effort. I can hear them saying, see, I told you remote work isn't as good as in the office. I also see this finding as good news for proponents of the metaverse. The latest Quest Pro headset from Meta uses eye tracking and facial expression detection to make a user's avatar more closely simulate what their eyes and face are doing. This is definitely going in the right direction but avatars are still cartoonish and can convey the range of emotion or show micro-expressions that we detect in person. We're a long way from our virtual representation offering the same rich experience as meeting in person. So what can we do in the meantime? I don't think the answer is to push everyone back into the office. We've known for years that Zoom calls aren't great, but we still got a lot done when we had to. First, we should have fewer meetings in my book, Friction, I offer lots of scary statistics about how much time is wasted in meetings. Instead of trying to improve the social bandwidth of every meeting, see which ones require fewer people to attend or can be eliminated completely. Second, let's use virtual tools wisely. Zoom calls are great for quick status updates, progress reports, and information sharing. If possible, though, some meetings are better done in person. Multi-hour strategy sessions, group idea generation and brainstorming, performance reviews, layoff announcements, celebrating wins, and other sessions likely to evoke emotional responses, either positive or negative. It's these kinds of meetings where high bandwidth social interaction and nonverbal communication are most important. Working from home isn't going away. Geographic separation of team members isn't going away. To maximize the success of our interactions, we need to choose the venue that's best for them. And if we have to meet virtually in a situation where in-person would be better, we need to take extra care to watch for cues that will help us understand what others are not just thinking, but feeling.